What's up guys? For today's video, I'm going over how and when to change your prop on an outboard motor. All right, so for those of you who clicked on this video to see how to change your prop, I'm gonna get started with that first. After I change the prop, I'm gonna go over when to change your prop when it's getting worn out and damaged, and also how to adjust your prop to gain more speed and power through your outboard. All right, well, the tools you're gonna need to change your prop is actually pretty basic. We're only gonna need a pair of pliers, a socket set, and some marine grease. On your prop, it's held on by a cotter pin and a castle nut. It's also the same thing that holds your wheel bearings on. If you change trail wheel bearings, this is gonna be very similar. Uh, first thing you wanna do is remove your cotter pin. This gets bent up and then pulled out the one side. Then you're gonna grab it through the loop and then pull it out the bottom of the castle nut. So now that the cotter pin has been removed, the only thing holding the prop onto your shaft right now is the castle nut. Castle nut sizes may vary. Uh, the ones on this motor, I can use an 11 16 wrench. You could put a block of wood up here to pin it so the actual prop doesn't spin while you're trying to get the nut off. Uh, this is actually not on there too tight, so I can just go ahead and use my wrench while I'm holding the blades of the prop to go ahead and loosen it up. And once that's loose, you can just unscrew it. With the castle nut off, you wanna take care to make sure that you don't lose the washer. There's a washer behind the nut. So make sure when you're pulling your prop off, you catch the washer. First thing we're gonna do is just remove the old grease. This looks like the grease wasn't too old, so it came off pretty easy. With the shaft cleaned from grease, we're gonna go ahead and apply some new marine grease. Now make sure you're using marine grade grease for this. You don't want greases that can wash out if it gets wet, because this is gonna be underwater. I Put a little bit on here. I'm going with a smaller pitch prop. I'm gonna go ahead and compare them now so you guys can see it when I talk about it later. I'm going from an eight and a half inch pitch prop to a seven and a half inch pitch prop. There's about an inch difference between the distance of the blades. Everything else is remaining the same as far as the diameter. Now when you're putting the new prop on, it does have teeth in the center groove here. These are gonna line up with the channels on the actual shaft. So once you get to that part of installing the prop, you can just kind of wiggle a little bit and you'll feel it seat into place and then it'll just slide right on. Okay. Now you're gonna go ahead and screw on your castle nut. You're not trying to over tighten this. You don't wanna, you know, break anything here. There's gonna be a small hole in the shaft that your old cotter pin came out of and you wanna tighten this down so you can see that hole through the gaps in the castle nut. If you can't see the hole, it's likely that the hole is sitting under one of the castle channels. Okay, I see the hole right here. It's just hidden under that one, so I'm just gonna tighten it down a little bit more. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that, but right in there, there's a hole. You can see a little bit of light through the other side. Now, if for some reason you can't fit your cotter pin in here, just play with the tightness, either tightening a little bit more or loosening a little bit, and that will allow the uh, cotter pin to seat through it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and slide it through the hole. I can grab one side of the pin and bend it around the top of the castle nut. You can take the other portion and bend it back. Once you have your cotter pin installed, your motor is good to be used. All right, so now that we got the new prop installed onto the outboard, I'm gonna go over the main reasons why you might wanna change your own prop. I'm gonna break it down into basically three different categories. Uh, the first one is wear and tear and damage. That's the most obvious reason to change your prop. The second is gonna be for handling and ride quality adjustment. And then the last one is gonna be trying to gain more performance out of your outboard. First, we'll start with the easy one, which is prop damage. It's actually in pretty good shape. The edges are worn, you know, that's just from running it through sand and things like that. The paint comes off, that's not a big deal. Uh, but the main damage you wanna look for, any places where your prop hit something and dented, Here's a really good example of a dent. Those kind of things can actually affect the performance of the prop. It can also generate vibrations while you're using it. Your hub is something that can also fail on your prop. That's what's called having a spun hub. This hub is basically pressed into the center of the prop. So most of the time for these that just come with hubs, that's already installed. So you're just gonna replace your prop. 
All right, so now the second reason to change your prop is gonna be usability of your motor. The higher in pitch you go, the higher top end you have, the lower in pitch you go, the faster your whole shot is. Uh, your goal in selecting a prop is really to find a happy medium between the two. So if you're having a boat that is really slow to get on plane, but you have a decent top end, uh, you can go down in pitch. That can reduce the top end speed slightly and it will increase your whole shot slightly. All right, the last reason to be changing your prop is to improve the performance of your outboard. Basically, your motor is set up to run within a very specific RPM range. That RPM range is where it produces the most torque and horsepower, and it's where it uses the fuel the most efficiently. So just like in your car, you don't want to drive your car at redline and not good for your engine and not good for driving. So if you want to do performance upgrade for your motor through a prop change, first thing you need to do is get yourself a tachometer reader. It'll measure the hours that you're using your outboard, which is, you know, a good thing to know for changing your oil and stuff like that. But it also measures the RPMs of your motor as it's running. The way it does that is there's a wire that runs from this unit into your motor. And that wire gets wrapped around one of your spark plug wires. Um, that wire can sense the electrical pulses that go through the spark plug wire, and it can use that to calculate the RPMs that your motor is currently running at. They're not down to the most exact RPM reading, but they will give you an idea of the general RPM range that your motor is running in. So as an example, this motor runs in its peak performance between 5,500 to 5,800 RPMs. You always wanna measure your RPMs at top speed. It hits around 5,100 to 5,000 RPMs. So what that tells me is that the pitch is too aggressive for the amount of weight that this motor is pushing. The ways you can raise your RPMs could be to raise your motor up out of the water more through a jack plate or a riser like I built here, or lowering the pitch in your prop. The lower the pitch of your prop, the higher your RPMs will go. In general, the rule of thumb is you gain around 100 to 200 RPMs for each pitch direction you go. So the flip side of this is that if your current prop is hitting its rev limiter as you're at top speed, that means that you're either overpowered for your setup or your prop is too small. That's pretty much the best scenario if you're looking to gain more performance because now you can go up in pitch, which will give you a higher top end speed and bring your RPMs down a little bit into the sweet spot for your motor. So by inspecting your prop for damage, figuring out what kind of usability you want out of your outboard and reading your RPMs to see where you're sitting at, there's a lot of different ways that you can see if changing your prop is the right decision. All right, well, if you guys found this helpful, either installing the prop or the information on when to change your prop or how to get some more performance out of your outboard, let me know by hitting that like button. If you wanna follow along for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.